ch what children need when they need it. And next, what if students could always be connected so we could assess and track their progress, uh, address the issues of administrivia with teachers entering data, which is tedious, for certain types of collection of data, and track and provide feedback both to the student uh, and to the teachers, who's been uh, being discussed earlier today. And lastly, this one's interesting. What if? In solving a problem, you conceive a problem, and you begin to think about a problem, and a tool, a pen and paper, a great tool to solve many types of problems. You scratch, you draw, you think. What if when you conceive of a problem and you begin to write it on a piece of paper, what you think you write and what you write works? What you write works. So we've developed a tool we call Fly. And we call it a, uh, a pen top computer going from a laptop to a desktop to a pen top. And Fly looks like this. So it's a small pen, weighs about 70 grams. If you look at it, you'll see it has a speaker. This is a self-contained computer. It has a speaker, power on off switch, indicator, it, two types of medium. It supports pen or pencil. Uh, it accepts different types of software with cartridges that go on the back end of it. It has a AAA battery. It can be charged with a nickel metal hydride battery and put in a docking station. And has USB connectivity as well. So self-contained computer package to write. We call it Fly, and we've, we've played on just, I thought you'd enjoy it, we've played on Fly as a language. So we have Fly Paper, we have Fly Strips, we have Fly Pods, we have uh, a Fly Trap, so all about branding. So, and the kids, kids uh, this is, I, by the way, we're launching this for tweens, so from 8 to, eight to 14, 9 to 15, um, and uh, the kids really respond to this, this branding concept. And the whole notion of doing it on the fly, um, with a look that has a nice, attractive, personalized element to it with lots of color. And so that's Fly. So I, I thought I'd take time to, uh, to do some demonstration, show you what Fly will do. So first, I can turn Fly on. If I do it here. Welcome, 3.2.1. That sounds like a prototype. It is a prototype. It's uh, engineering software just out of the lab a few days ago. And, um, but this is Fly. So what I'll do for, for this is I'll plug it in. It has a, a jack for a headphone or for powered speakers. So this will just be a little bit easier to hear. Let's see if we have this working. So I mentioned before it works with any paper. So I'll start with something. This could be a wall map. I made a little smaller one. This is a map of the United States. It has uh, name places on one side. On the other side, no name places. So we'll put this down. If we can switch to the, uh, the Elmo. Great. So again, I could be holding this up, and I'll pick it up in a minute to show you. Well, in fact, I'll do it that way. So I'll start here just by tapping it, and I'll tap a state. Utah, Kansas, Arizona. OK, and it talks to me. So if I put this down, I can, you can see tap state. Arkansas, Missouri, Illinois. And move to capitals. Capitals. Tap a state, province, or Central American country to hear its capital. Santa Fe, capital of New Mexico. Denver, Colorado, Helena, Montana. Or play some music. Music. Tap a country to hear its music. Like the U.S. United States, national anthem. Or some uh, Cuba music. <laughs> music. <laughs> and Jamaica music. Okay, let's have some fun. The Pacific Ocean. So uh, this is... Uh, Simple example of, of use of paper with pre-printed material. I'll show you pre-printed and non-pre-printed. But for this, I could also kick off a learning game to teach kids the states and initiate it with states or provinces. States and provinces, tap a country to begin. And for this, is there, could I uh, ask for a volunteer? Someone that loves geography. All right, come on down. The music from Jamaica is wrong. Oh, it is? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> we'll note it. Thanks, Jay. Okay. <laughs> um, so if if we kick off a game, uh, let's see. I'm gonna I'm gonna nab someone. Let's see. Nick, go on. Want to come up? Uh, Judy, Nick, Nick, come on up. Okay. <laughs> All right. 
Okay, so we'll pick the United States and it's going to ask you to tap states okay. as fast as you can. Fast don't don't be nervous. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> United States, listen for states and tap them as fast as you can. Find all you can in 60 seconds. Go. South Dakota. Louisiana. Mississippi. Minnesota. Look next door. Listen. Look next door. <laughs> New Jersey. Make a deliberate mistake. Touch out in the west. Look in the northeastern no, touch part of the U.S. Look 800 miles northeast. Let's keep going. Colorado. Look next door. Okay. North Carolina. All right, all right. Next door. Utah. <laughs> Look east of Nevada. Massachusetts. <laughs> Touch repeat. Nope. You're off the hook. Time's up. You found seven. All right. Congratulations. Good job. Your new high score is seven. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. So start with, start with pre-printed paper any size, okay? Let's go to, uh, I'm going to show you a mix of media today, some of which we'll be launching, and I'll explain this fall when we launch the product, others of which I'm, I'm showing today to stimulate thought based upon the conversations that have taken place in the last day and a half. So for instance, a textbook. This is looking to the future. Okay, textbook. Will textbooks be around in two years? Yeah, five years still. 30 years? I bet if I took a poll, how many, 30 years, will textbooks still be used? Wow, 75% uh, say yes. Okay, well let's think about if we have a textbook, what we could do if every page in the textbook was interactive. So we have a 600 page textbook and it's all interactive. So what would you want to do? We started with, it's a little close. Okay, so I'll, I'll start with, uh, what teachers have told us for remedial assistance is very basic. So this is a bookmark that has some options on it, such as read word, read paragraph. So if I'd like to read word, read a word, I can touch words in the textbook. Newly elected President Abraham Lincoln believed that it was unconstitutional. Okay, so read words, something you'd expect. Read, read paragraph. paragraph. Touch next to the Newly paragraph. elected President Abraham Lincoln believed that it was unconstitutional okay. for the southern states to secede. Translate word. Cantonese. Vietnamese. Haitian so, Spanish. So go Spanish. So if we'd like to translate a word in Spanish. Flag. Bandera. And maybe if I want to touch a word twice for a definition. Con confederate. A member of a confederacy. An ally. Or read a paragraph translate in a second language. Hmm. Presidente nuevamente elegido, Abraham Lincoln, creyó que era inconstitucional. Read word. Okay, so, so that's interesting is, is in offering remedial support for a certain group of kids who could benefit greatly from that. But if we want to address learning, typically when a child sits down to read a textbook, or read a chapter, they begin by reading the chapter. They'll start by reading word by word, jump right into it. What we want to teach them is to preview it, study it, think about the questions they'd like to address, read it in detail, then review it. So what if we could, if, if, if Fly could be a tutor and could take them on a tour of a chapter and then prompt them to read it and take questions and answer questions. So for instance, they could touch the, the title of the chapter the war between the states. and start a tour. Let's take a two minute chapter tour. Touch the big picture below. Okay. The big picture, 1861, the nation splits while Abe Lincoln tries to hold it together. A house divided unto itself cannot stand. Touch, war breaks out on the next page. So we'll head up to war breaks out. We'll introduce some sound effects and some mnemonics. Create some imagery. War breaks out. The graph on this page shows how unbalanced resources, people, and technology were between the two sides. Check out those stats for the North. So we've taken their eyes. The Union plan for victory on the next page. Creating a scaffold, prompting, developing some, some information about the chapter, directing their eyes to a graph, familiarizing them with the context, information, and then have a little bit more fun with some, uh, some sounds and imagery. The Union plan for victory. 
Union Commander Winfield Scott created the Anaconda Plan. First, he cut off the South's trade routes by sea. There she blows! Fire across her bow and rip her sails! Then he'd control the Mississippi. The mighty mist cuts the culprits in two. And attack from the east and west like an anaconda and squeeze like a snake. Ouch! Touch the Confederacy at war on the next page. Okay, so we'll lead them through the chapter. When we get to the end of the chapter, have a quick chapter review. In this four-year war, both great leaders and new technologies such as railroads, <laughs> telegraph, and ironclads, Changed warfare. Now read the chapter for details, then touch Think About It below for a cool review. Okay, so in a couple of minutes, we've done a great thing for a student. We've, done, we've developed some metacognitive processing, understanding how to actually study a chapter, lead them through it, think about it, make it interesting. Let them go back and read it in detail. But reading in detail is a lot easier now. When they get to the end of it, in this model, we haven't changed the text at all. We've demonstrated this to show what we can overlay on existing text without changing the concept of design. But now I'll touch Think About It. Time for a raging rapid review. Find the names of the four states who joined the Confederacy after the Union surrendered Fort Sumter. So now I need to really have read the chapter. Go back and find the reference to the states, Virginia, North Carolina. Right on. Virginia, North Carolina, Arkansas, and Tennessee. Ready? Here's the next one. What percentage of Southern people were enslaved at the start of the Civil War? So now I need to look on the graph. If I make a mistake and say pick 20%. Good effort, but let's focus on the yellow segment on the graph, just above the word people. See, it indicates 10% of the South population was enslaved. Excellent. And I get it correct. 10% of the South population were slaves. So my speculation is in looking at it, the textbooks have not been designed to be interactive. They're quite passive. But if we design textbooks with the technology in mind that let them take part with a tutor as the student processes it, we'll see a change in the way printed material is developed. This is quite exciting. Shift now. After you've read this textbook, what you'd really like a student to do would be to sit down and reflect on it and do some, apply some critical thinking and, and write a page of notes. How do you get a student to write a page of notes in their own bedroom at home when they're studying? It's pretty difficult, but what if you could guide them to do it? So again, have them touch the title. The Civil War. The War to Preserve the Union. No, the War of Southern Secession. Sort out the facts by writing a Civil War outline. To begin, write the word North by the Stars and Stripes flag. So I'll write North. <laughs> Now, write the word South by the Confederate flag. Great! Charge ahead! What does it take to win a war? Touch the star labeled Key People. Okay. Key People. Abraham Lincoln was president of the Union during the Civil War. Write his name under key people for the North. So I'll write Lincoln. Abel Abe was honored for his honesty. I, Abra <clears throat> I, Abraham Lincoln, believe it is unconstitutional for any southern state to secede. Jefferson Davis was another important person in the Civil War. But for which side? Write his name under the correct key people spot. Now, first branch. So far I've been told what to write, where to write, and I'm asked, where does Davis belong, in the north or the south? If I write him in the north, I'll be told, uh-oh, he doesn't belong in the north. Erase that. Write him in the south. And continue on. So pretty soon I have a page full of notes. And I have arrows and diagrams and cannonballs. And I filled in my timeline and have my text. It's my own handwritten set of notes that I've developed myself reflecting on what I've learned. And it's interactive. So when I finish it, I can play a game. Answer the following questions. Who is the president of the union? Okay, was that Davis or Lincoln? I think that was Lincoln. Terrific! Right. Our nations, you're a Civil War expert. Okay, so take note, in the technology here, you'll, I'll talk about the technology in the pen, but this didn't use character recognition. We just, if you know, it just looked where I wrote the information and it told me where to write it, so it tracked it. So if I wrote down Davis instead of Lincoln, I would have had a problem for myself, but kids won't do that because you're being told what to write. So that piece works very well for this application. But to make the big step forward, when I described this notion of, of what you write works, that means we have to track what you're writing. So I have a notebook with uh, some blank pages of paper. 
my fly paper. <clears throat> and this works, um, this paper is ordinary paper. This, this incidentally was printed on a, uh, a laser jet printer. So it's printed with some dots um, that are black that are seen by the optical technology in the pen. And it tracks the dots as you're writing so that it can respond. This is just uh, plain white paper with dots that are barely visible. It gives it a little gray color. But what if I'd like now to turn this piece of paper into effectively a computer screen without e-ink, which will happen eventually. So I'd like to use very low cost paper and make it act like a computer. What, we start with what a computer does well, and how we navigate. I have to start by navigating through a menu system, identify an application, launch the application, and work within it. So let's do that. We created a, a new paradigm and a user, user interface we call FlyCons, Fly Icons. And a FlyCon is one or two letters with a circle around it that then tells me what to do. So to use a Fly pen top computer, I need to know about FlyCons. I write them, then I listen. That's it. So if I write an M and I circle it. Main menu. There's my main menu. Tap M to scroll through menu options. It tells me what to do. I'll tap it to scroll through my options. Scheduler. Calculator. And I could do this here as well. Time. Notepad. Settings. Games menu. Scheduler. And again, I can unplug the speaker, just so to everyone select came in scheduler, late. Scheduler, draw a check mark to the right of the M flag on. So if I unplug this. Calculator. Time. Notepad. Okay, so it's all self-contained. Draw a check mark to the right of the M flag on. So Tap let's go M on to. to set games menu. Scheduler. Calculator. We'll pick calculator. To select calculator, draw a check mark to the right of the M flycon. Put a check mark. Write C and circle it for your calculator menu. Write a C, circle it. Calculator. Draw a box the size you want to make your calculator. Okay, let's draw a calculator. In the box, write each number from 0 to 9. Wait for Fly to speak after each one. So if someone would like to give me a single digit number. 13. 6, okay. Six. Leave space about the width of your pinky between the numbers. Okay, one other thing I'll mention, since it's watching for you to write, it waits till you're done writing. If you'd like to tell it you're done tap writing... Tap the C-fly icon to scroll through hint. You double click, or you double tap, and that tells it you're done. So if I just keep writing numbers, there's a seven. Seven. A five. Five. Three. Three. Two. two eight. Nine. Zero. Each time you write something, wait for Fly to speak. Ah, I'm getting ahead of it. One. Now write my functions One. in. A times. Times. Minus. Minus. Plus. Divided by. Equals. So I've written my calculator on my paper, and now I'll use the it. numbers and symbols in your calculator to solve problems. Eight times nine equals 72. Okay. So I've built an application. So I've put two pieces together, which are the starting point of something very powerful, if you think about this the right way. A means to navigate to an application with an open architecture on a blank piece of paper with a tool that fits in my pocket. And then once I find the application, I can draw it and work within it. So we have the power to do a lot of things with this. So for example, um, I could scroll through this. I'm going to run out of time. Um, to select I'm, scheduler, tap the check mark to the right of the M fly con. I'm going to jump to a fun game, which is music. And so it's called fly tones. So I'll do FT. Fly tones. Create your keyboard. Starting from left to right, draw nine vertical lines in a row. OK, let's do One, it. two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine. Connect the lines across the bottom and the top. So we'll draw the bottom and the top. To play some music, tap the keys. So we For built options, it. tap the FT flycon. We built a keyboard. Let's play it. Or uh, maybe let's expand the keyboard. Let's put Sharps some, and flats. Some black keys on it. Sharps and flats. Draw a rectangle above line two on your keyboard. One. Now draw a rectangle above line three on your keyboard. Two. Draw one above line five. five three. Draw one. Line six. Four. Draw one. Seven. Five. So now we got to our play whole keyboard. Music. Tap the keys. 
Okay. Sharps and instrument select. Instrument select. To create your keyboard instrument select button, write a K and draw a box around it. So let's give ourselves some choices of more instruments. Tap this button to change the keyboard sound. Synthesizer. Flute. Orchestra hits. Marimba. Okay. Turntable. <laughs> sound effects. And sound effects, kids really enjoyed this, so we, we use some sound effects that are kind of on the edge, um, such as. We have to, we're working with tweens, and we're providing a tool that teaches when they want to learn, that assists them, but that has to give some fun. They have to have a reprieve, and they really play with this a lot. I could continue on, I could put rhythm tracks down, I can write a chord button, a looping button, a play button, I can build a whole studio. And this is just the start. This is a simple studio. If there are any musicians in the audience, I flew with uh, some musicians that I met on the plane flight coming down or from, from, uh, from Emeryville, and they, were, they passed this pen around from one to the next. I can't believe this. It was very exciting. So uh, music, this also has a scheduler in it. So I can write down the time and a date and write down a message and it will turn itself on and speak to me and say, wake up or do your, do your homework or whatever you want it to say. So this is all open paper. Um, one more that I could make note of, uh, which is, see if you can guess what this fly con is. Translator. Tap TR for your translator options. It's rather natural. English to Spanish. Spanish to English. English to Spanish. Write a word for translation. So let's go simple. Cat. El gato. E-L-G-A-T-O. El gato. Okay. I can only begin to show a little bit of this. I'll let's see. I have to watch Alex for time. Couple minutes. Okay, got to wrap it up. Last things to note: we have a, uh, a pad here that has paper that's gridded to write a math problem. You can write a long division, a long multiplication math problem, and ask for help, and it will help you solve it step by step, pointing out your numbers, describing exactly how to do it. We have paper for spelling, so you can write in your own spelling list and practice your own spelling words on a weekly basis. We have an interactive uh, baseball game with real baseball cards. It sounds like a radio announcement where you get to pitch and you get to hit and you play against your, your buddies and you hand pick, you pick your own team and staff your team. There is a, uh, uh, a friends kit that deals with girls socializing. It's kind of like a slumber party kit that asks them questions about their friends and, and social events in their lives and dates and crushes and helps them solve issues. Uh, a journal that prompts them to, uh, to write and uh, ask them questions about things. And when you give this to girls, they won't stop writing. All it does is prompt them to think about things that are important. And, uh, and uh, coming out as well with a first of a kind, an interactive role playing game based upon Batman that's very strategic and very deep. And, uh, and the sound effects are brilliant. And as you, you're, you're, you're competing against Raz Al Jul, and you, you choose your player, and you have to think about how to outsmart your player. And it's a 45 minute game, so it's a real strategy game with some, some significant gameplay involved in it. So I just want to give you a sense of the breadth of potential when you start with some creative approaches to something that has a lot of power, it's in your pocket, and, uh, and is a new medium. So if you would, if you could flip back to the PC. I'll wrap up with a, a call to action if I could. Thank you. So implications, we have a medium that has, has may, I think, quite, quite substantial potential as we look at this. Because in the future, to think that you'd have, as this grows smaller and lighter, less expensive, by the way, this will retail for $99 this fall. Ships with an earbud, comes with open paper with a set of games and a carrying case. And as we look at this and say, anyone that's writing right now, imagine that your pen is intelligent and it can continue to offer you a set of utilities to assist you in thinking and solving problems. Then I look at this and say, we're not talking about five or 10 million, but I think about a billion. Look out 10 years, and 10 years, everyone will just have, by nature, an interactive writing tool that will assist them. Um, and I call it, it's, really, it's not really disruptive technology because it's evolutionary. We're drawing from pen and paper, so it's innovative. So an evolutionary disruptive technology, if you will. Um, what we're looking for, so LeapFrog, we are developing an SDK. 
and we're opening this platform up and we're looking for people to develop content on this platform. So we'll, we'll have a, a very limited uh, offer available this fall with a, a beta SDK with just a handful of companies to work with and partners and educators and academics and students. But as we look ahead to next year, we'd like to broaden this considerably. And we'll have an SDK that we'd like people to think about uh, pen top computing with. And so uh, as a quick note, there's contact information. Uh, Mike, are you here? Mike Houlihan's in the back of the room. So mhoulihan at leapfrog.com or, or my name is Jim Margraff. And um, we hope that this stimulates lots of great things for classrooms and for the world at large and learning. Thank you very much.